Hello, Ace. This is RetroTK2, and today we're back making our Pokemon ROM hack. Last time we tidied up our Pokemon launcher in Unity, and today I want to go through save states with you. So let's get started. So if you remember, we can just press the play ROM button, and we are straight into our Pokemon ROM. I'm not entirely sure how to make this go quickly again. I'm certain there's a way to make it go into super speed mode. Is that it, maybe? <laughs> Just pressing all the buttons at the minute, Ace. So, in order to create a save state, there is... You can either go up and press File, go to Save Game, and then choose one of these slots, or you can use the shortcut, which is Shift and F1. Then, to load the save state, you would either go up here, go Load Game, and choose one of these, or you can just press the F button associated with that. So, if I show you that now, Shift F1, we have a save state, and I'll move around here. And now if I press, oops, and now if I press F1, you can see we're warped straight back. So this is, of course, exceptionally easy, or exceptionally useful, or is going to be accessible. This is, of course, going to be exceptionally useful uh, as we go through our development. So I want to save the state F1 here. And then I want to have a save state 2 be right beside yeah, Brock's gym. Perfect. So now as you can see, if I press F2, straight back to Brock's gym, and F1 brings us straight back to our pallet town house. Which is brilliant, Ace, because, well, now it means that I, whenever I load the game up, so if I go to play ROM, F1, we're straight there. Play ROM, F2, we're in Brock's gym. Now I was hoping that it would be possible for me to load the game up and then uh, you know, load it up with an actual save state already loaded. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be possible to do that, although I suppose I could attempt to do... Uh, you can actually send key requests to the actual Pokemon launcher, which is... Or, to an actual program that is being used. So I wonder if I should give that an attempt. I'll tell you what, I'll sort of show you the way that the saves are saved. <laughs> so if you go into the actual folder there where your actual ROM is, you'll see that we also have these uh, .sm or .sgm uh, extension files. And these are essentially our save states. So if I went in here and deleted number two here, went back into play ROM, went up to file and went load game, you'd see that number two has been completely removed and that, well, yeah, number two has been completely removed. And if I go and create a, another one, shift F2 and exit that, you should see that it has recreated a number two. Now this is going to be perfect for us here because it means that we can bring these in, possibly take them out, make other uh, folders, uh, you know, specific to certain regions. So say we wanted to use just Brock's gym, or we were just doing Brock's storyline or whatever. We could have uh, Pewter City, we could have Brock's gym, you know, maybe in slot one and two. Then we could have Mount Moon, maybe three, you know, etc., etc. And then put that into maybe Brock's own folder. And then we could have one for Misty as well that would have all different sort of save states. I believe that there's uh, nine save states, but we could have even more. We could rename these as certain ones and then maybe even create a program to have them load in to this ROM folder whenever we want to change them out. But we will, of course, leave that on the back burner. So I could leave the video there, but I want to attempt to send a key to our actual process. And I think that would be pretty cool. It, it, this, this, yeah, this could make a pretty good video. Okay, so here on Stack Overflow, it seems like this is the sort of code that we need in order for our thing to actually work. So we want to wait for the input to be idle and then we want to actually send the key just using this code here. So this could work out perfectly. We actually need to have the actual process itself, which I'm just going to call P. I don't know whether you should probably name your variables P or single letters in general, but I usually like doing it because usually whenever I'm thinking single letters, I'm thinking, okay, this is within the scope of either my method or these curly brackets. Usually you would use single scope for things like using or things like the for loops. 
any variables that are in there. So this kind of makes sense with that sort of logic there. So if I paste in this code, and even this guy's used the two, which is great. So I import that as well, int PR. And this is actually using, yeah, set foreground window. And we're also gonna have to import the user 332.dll. I don't really wanna get too much into what's going on here, Ace. I mean, we know that this is a C-sharp attribute and really I don't wanna get it too much into it because I'm not entirely sure what's going on. I know we're in importing a DLL. I mean, that's <laughs> of course a wee bit obvious, but I can't really remember too much why this is important. It's not necessarily important to go it, you know, too uh, down and deep into actually the reasons why this is important. It's not really that important to get too down and deep into why this is important because, well, I don't think it's necessary for us to know it in order for us to be able to use this program. Let's let's put it that way. Maybe that would be a better way of putting it. So, okay, let's see if we can actually get this to work. I don't expect this to work at all, Ace, but hopefully it will. Save the uh, the script and head back in. And of course, it didn't work. Oh, it, okay, it's actually coming up with an error, which is always fun. Why are we coming up with an error? Windows does not exist as well, it wouldn't. See, this is a, a bit of an issue here, Ace, yes, at the minute, because I'm trying to, basically what's happening is I'm trying to include a reference in C Sharp that doesn't exist inside of Unity. Unity can be a wee bit temperamental with the way that it actually needs the DLLs to be in the Unity project. It can't just have them on your Windows machine. So I wonder if there's a better way to do this. So really the only way I can think of doing this is to import in the actual Windows form DLL, which is a real pain. Yes, this is a nightmare. Namespace Windows does not exist in the namespace system, which is true, as we well know. So what we're going to do now is create a folder called plugins. And this is basically, uh, we can put our DLLs into here, yes, into the plugins folder. And hopefully this should be okay. This is gonna be a little bit tricky to do, yes, but we'll see how I get on. I think we should be fairly okay. Okay, so if I view this, okay, let's get this location. And let's, Open up a new window. That's one thing I actually don't really necessarily like about Windows is, is the fact that, oops, is the fact that it, um, the actual Explorer is, I think it's really, really annoying. <laughs> It'd be cool if they would actually, I was hoping they would do that whenever they had Windows 10. I was really, really hoping that we would get to see some, um, some pretty nice, and like a, a new update to the Explorer, but it is just the same old, well, one folder view, which is a shame. It would have been cool to see, you know, similar to the Apples thing with uh, the columns. Although it's got nothing to do with what I'm talking about now, yes, so don't worry too much about it. So paste in the actual DLL and wait for the plugins to recompile. Hopefully this will all work, but I don't expect it to. Uh, it's not complaining, which is a good start and reload the solution yes save that and go for it hopefully this will all come up with no problems no issues nope yep no bother okay cool so let's have a wee look and see if we can actually play the ROM now no didn't work now i don't know whether that's not i don't know whether it's not working as in it's not actually sending the key, or if it is sending the key and it's sending it just too quick. I'm not 100% sure about that one, Ace. What if there's a way that we can delay the sending of the key? That would be a bit more ideal, I suppose. Um, unless that's what send wait does. Let's have really Okay, so it waits for the actual message to be processed, which is not what we necessarily want. We want to sort of set up a little bit of a timer here, Ace, in order for the actual window to wait until it can actually accept uh, keyboard keystrokes. And then we want to just pretty much jam it in. <laughs> okay, I kind of want to do it so that we'll make it that this P is its own variable, 
field maybe yeah perfect and then i kind of want to make it so that if uh p doesn't equal null then we will pretty much just spam the life out of this send function and hopefully that'll all work i don't expect this i mean this is terrible code in this and i definitely will be uh you know, cleaning this up in a minute, but I just want to see if this works. So it's spamming it as we know. Actually, is it spamming it? That's a good question. Um, let's make sure it's spamming it. Um, hello. Dot log with our Unity Spice plugin. And okay, let's have a little look and see if this works now. Okay, so as we can see, no, okay. Ah, okay. And is that sent now? No. Ah, uh, well, okay, okay. Uh, so that's a bit of an issue there because, ah, oh, probably should have known this. Uh, okay, because, so because we're trying to do all this stuff from Unity, the, actual hang on i wonder if uh, i wonder if it could do it if we hmm okay so long so because we're doing this from unity and the actual on gui of the code this isn't going to work because we require it to not be on on gui because on gui will only get will only execute uh, functions in here whenever the you know mouse goes over events happen on the on gui and then it forces that to occur so should have known that to be honest yes but hey so what we're going to have to do instead is use the editor utility i believe and it's the update no okay i can't remember where this is editor somewhere editor application maybe dot update oops it's compiling no that's not quite right yep so what we need to do is actually tap into the update function and we want that to be its own method. Say on update or something, maybe like that, yes. So what we want this to do is actually execute, this will execute on the actual method, or uh, this will execute, this will execute our on update method whenever our editor's application is just updating, which is essentially a fancy way of saying whenever our editor is updating, it will launch this function, yes. And we also need to put in an on disable so that we unlink our event, which is this here. Ace, if you've done absolutely no C sharp programming at all and have no idea what's going on here, don't worry too much about it. I will, of course, be covering this in my actual C sharp series. So let's see if this all works. I have a sneaking suspicion that it won't at all but we can at least try and see if it does. Okay, so first of all, let's make sure that, oops, okay, go away. Okay, so everything's all working as you would expect it. Oh, come on, and let's get that linked up again. That was a bit silly. Okay, perfect. And now let's go into play ROM. And as you can see, it's hitting our hello and our hello is going like absolute crazy. It's trying to play the, the press f1 but of course as we can see it's not hitting f1 that was just me pressing it there yes um but our you know update function is working which is great so okay oh i'm an idiot okay so it's okay i'm an, an absolute idiot it's trying to send it's sending the f1 to um well to <laughs> unity i guess that isn't gonna work okay let's have a look here Finally, yes, I was able to actually get it working. So now it all just works the way it should. The going down the actual path of the uh, Windows form route didn't actually really work in the end. The send keys function just couldn't get it to work, unfortunately. So instead, what I've got is an incredibly rudimentary uh, way of doing it. So we're using the update method still. 
And what happens is it'll actually go through if the actual process itself, which I'm going to change right now to process, uh, VBA process to be a little bit more precise since it's now an actual field. And we also, so now if it's equal to null, it will return instantly from this method. And this fire is pretty much just um, a bool that says should fire F1 key, which is essentially what that's doing. This bool gets set as soon as we click on our VBA process, just to set it to true, and pretty much instantly gets set to false whenever we come through. Then the actual thread will sleep for 500, sec mil uh, 500 milliseconds, which I'm really not impressed with at all, but it's a way to get it working. It does work, and the Fire F1 key is just this code here. So it's a keyboard event. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> my uh, Chrome, wh whenever I was setting this up, actually this code, I didn't have this uh, Shoot Fire F1 key, so it just constantly kept spamming F1. So whenever I went back into Chrome, it just pretty much opened a new tab <laughs> every couple of milliseconds. So uh, yeah, you can look forward to seeing that at the end of the video. But um, so yeah, unfortunately, I can't actually show you where I got this from. I believe it was from Stack Overflow, of course, as all good coding snips come from. But I can't actually give credit uh, to where the code is. But so yeah, it, it works, yes, which is brilliant. And... Now in an ideal world base, we'll probably set it up so that you could just load in several save state at once as opposed to just going to the default first one. But for now, I'm going to leave it there. I think that's plenty for us to get uh, started with. And yeah, I think I'll do this. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, flip it. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> ah, flip. Maybe that. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, this is the reason why you want to be very careful when uh, dealing with things. This, gee, that's a. <laughs> that's quite the mess. <laughs> Oh dear. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Yes, I hope you're enjoying this series. You can email me at retrotk2 at gmail.com with any Pokemon ROM hacks, tips that you think I should follow. Thank you for watching this, and I'll see you in the next video.